Hello and welcome back to Leon Talks Film. So first up, I just want to say you might notice a bit of a change in the video quality. That is because I've got a new phone and I'm actually recording this video on my new phone. So I can actually shoot videos in 4K now and I don't know if I'll be rendering them in 4K. I don't know if I'll be shooting them constantly in 4K, but the option's there and it's going to look a lot better than a webcam. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully the lighting's a bit better. I'm just recording this through my phone's audio right now, so I'm going to test that out because the way I used to do videos very early when I started is I used to use my uh, professional microphone and synchronize the audio up, but I don't actually know how it sounds just through this uh, regular phone. So we'll see how it sounds and if it's fine, maybe I'll just continue recording through this for the time being for videos along this line. Um, but yeah, without Without further ado, let's get into this video, and today I am going to be doing a bit of a review recommendation unboxing of the recently released three seasons of the uh, Shudder original Creep Show series. So yeah, there's currently three releases so far, three seasons are out. So we've got season one, which came out, I want to say about 2019 or something. Season two, which came out 2020, I believe. And then season three, which came out 2021, 2022. There's currently a fourth season that's just about to premiere on Shudder. And uh, yeah, uh, over the past couple of weeks, I've been uh, diving through these and I've got to say, I've had an absolute blast. Uh, yeah, I've had so much fun, and I think I'd be here all night if I was trying to talk about every single individual episode, every single segment, and all of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight a couple of my favorites, and I'm going to kind of let you know what's included on these releases, whether or not I think they're worth purchasing. So before we actually start on the show, a bit of context. Uh, I am quite a big fan of Creep Show. I uh, I own the Shout Factory Blu-ray for Creep Show One, which uh, is incredible. Incredible, and I really want to get the 4K. I recently rewatched Creep Show One. I uh, showed it to a friend a couple of weeks ago, and it's still so remarkable. It's one of my favorite Romero films. It's so fun. It's endlessly entertaining, super creative, genuinely creepy at parts, and you know I absolutely love that film. And then next we have Creep Show Two, which was directed by the original film cinematographer, I believe. And I've seen this once. I need to give this a revisit. Maybe I'll do it sometime this uh, October, Halloween and all that. But I remember liking it. And this uh, Arrow release is uh, absolutely fantastic too. Now, I know there was a creep show free, but I've heard very, very mixed to negative things about it. So I've not really went out of my way to uh, check it out yet. But maybe maybe I'll check it out at some point. I don't know if it's got a UK release or anything. Like, definitely doesn't have a Blu-ray or anything. So, um, yeah, that, that's basically the extent of my uh, interaction and opinions on the Creep Show films. I'd love to talk a bit more in depth about the original at some point, because it's so good. It's so good. Um, but then we get into the uh, three seasons of the uh, Shudder series. And... Yeah, before uh, these were sent over, I just thought I'd mention, these were sent over directly by uh, Acorn Media, who distribute the Shudder releases over AIM Publicity, so thank you so much uh, for sending these over for me to check out. Um, yeah, when these were sent over, I hadn't seen any of the Creep Show like series. Like, I, I have a Shudder account and everything, and I check out a lot of their original programming, but... I've just never got around to checking out the Creep Show show. <laughs> so uh, hearing, oh yeah, they're getting Blu-ray releases. Yeah, I'll, I'll review those. I'll check those out. And I've got to say, I really, really like this show. I'm uh, I'm actually so excited to check out season four when that comes out in a couple of weeks. Uh, it might even be next week, you know. I don't think it's very, like, far along because I know it comes out sometime in October. But yeah, I um, I knew that it was kind of a back-to-basics thing. It's from uh, created by Greg Nicotero, who is the executive producer of The Walking Dead. He did visual effects. I, I think I watched Spawn recently, like the 90s Spawn film with Michael J. White. I think Greg did the uh, special effects for that. But yeah, he's uh, very famous. He's worked on countless like zombie shows and horror like themed movies, shows and all of that stuff. So he kind of helms this and directs a bunch of the episodes. Not all of them. Some of them are directed by guest directors, which I will get into. Um, but overall, I really, really had a fun time with these, uh, like <laughs> this uh, series. Show, so I was going to say these seasons. But yeah, I mean, overall, I think it's an incredibly, incredibly consistent series. So right off the bat, you've got season one which I think is a really, really solid introduction. I'm actually going to quickly get my phone because I made a couple of notes and everything, and I want to I wanna highlight a few episodes in particular. Okay, so yeah, season one. Season one opens with a segment featuring Tobin Bell. That's John Kramer 
Jigsaw himself, and Jean Carlo Esposito, who you'll probably know as Gus Fring from Breaking Bad. Adrienne Barbeau, I hope I got her name right, I'm trying to remember her name. I think she's also in that episode, and it very much sets the tone for, like, the good old creature feature, like, ghost tale type thing. Kind of reminded me a bit of The Fog, in a way, even though it doesn't really, it's not really the same as Carpenter's The Fog, but it kind of gave me those vibes. It's very, like, oh, story late at night in, like, a, yeah, I think it's a lighthouse and everything. I really, really loved that opening. And yeah, there's another segment which uh, basically follows Kid Cudi, and it kind of feels like dog soldiers a little bit. It's got werewolves, there's some really, like, expressive, like, comic panel style shots and everything, which I really, really loved. Um, episode 3 had a segment directed by David Bruckner. If you're not aware of David Bruckner, he's the man who directed the recent Hellraiser reboot, but he also directed The Ritual. He directed segments in VHS 1 and the one that just came out. It was at, like, 85 or something. I, I don't know, the, the naming convention of those new VHS films <laughs> confuses me a lot, but he directs uh, two segments, actually, and I prefer his first one to the second one, but the second one's pretty fun, kind of a scarecrow -y type of uh, hint, tinge to it, I guess. Um, yeah, no, I thought that was really solid, and I think the thing I like and admire the most about Creepshow is it's not a show that has a tremendous budget or anything, but that never limits any of the creatives behind it. So whether you've got Greg Nicotero directing, at the end of season one, there's actually an episode directed by Tom Savini. I mean, anyone who's into horror knows who Tom Savini is. So there's some great, great guest directors. Um, and speaking of guests, the actual guests in the show are fantastic. So again, you've got a uh, Adriana Barbo, uh, Tobin Bell, um, Jeffrey Coombs, Kid Cudi, Jean Carlo Esposito, David Arquette, just to name a few. So yeah, here, here's that. I hope that actually is legible and everything. But yeah, you've got like tons of guest stars in there. Well, I'll actually go through the guests just so you kind of have a feel for who you're into. So who you're getting. So Ted Raimi. Ted Raimi is in season two. He's in the uh, opening episode and he's basically playing himself. Ted Raimi appears as Ted Raimi and he finds the Necronomicon from the Evil Dead and he's like trying to hawk it off. It's really fun. Like it's really, really fun. Um, You've got um, an episode with Molly Ringwald, which is pretty good. Keith David's episode is excellent. And uh, the guy who's with him, I forget that guy's name, but he's uh, from The Walking Dead. He's really, really great. Got Barbara Crampton, of course, reanimate a fame, all of that stuff. Uh, the finale of season two stars Justin Long, and that's excellent. Like, I really, really loved that. Yeah, Kiefer Sutherland and Joey King are in it, and they're in the animated special, which is quite fun as well. Uh, yeah, so in season two, you actually get two specials. You get the Creepshow animated special, and you get the holiday special. So you get two additional episodes, um, which is great. And in terms of extras, I'll go through those in a minute too, but they're excellent extras too. And then in season three, you've got uh, James Remar, King Buck, who, uh, or King Back. He's a uh, YouTuber, Viner type guy. Uh, Michael Rucker, Mark Hamill, uh, Ron Livingston. There are so many excellent, excellent guest characters. And uh, in particular, I really, really do like the one with uh, James Remar or James Raymar. Uh, I'm, I'm really bad at pronunciation, I'm so sorry. But that one basically follows a bunch of horror collectors who are really really, really big into horror, and they're kind of selling and uh, showcasing authentic props from films such as, like, they, uh, I think they have the chainsaw from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, and I was like, nice. Um, and yeah, no, I, I think overall, Creepshow is pretty fantastic. Like, it's a show that revels in that old EC, EC Comics type approach that the original films did. It has the same endearing love for those comics and old, like, Tales from the Crypt type stuff that everyone thinks of when they think of Creepshow. But it also carves its own path. It has some store, some more contemporary elements too, like, I don't know, social media or cell phones are involved in a couple of episodes. But there's also episodes that feel very much like a classic Stephen King tale, and there's actually episodes in this, uh, in the series as a whole that, um, are, they're like stories written by Stephen King. So you're getting that same kind of Stephen King uh, fare that you get in the original Creepshow film. You're getting uh, some high quality uh, stuff from great directors. Yeah, I think there's only like a handful of segments I didn't really enjoy. Like there's one on a spaceship, which was, eh, uh, I think that's in season two. Um, and yeah, there's like the, the odd segment that isn't going to be 
be as spectacular as some of the more like restrained ones or some of the more creature featurey ones but there's never any like dip in quality where i'm like yeah this sucks or anything like i think the good thing about it is each episode is around 40 minutes long so you'll get two segments sometimes there'll be one story so i think the holiday special is just one story and the finale of season two uh involving justin long that's just one story throughout the whole 40 odd minute runtime 45 minutes but the good thing about the show is by the time uh if you're watching it and you're not hugely invested in one of the stories you've only got another 15 20 minutes to wait until the next one comes on so yeah it's a really great range of like these different stories these different uh kind of segments i think my favorite is probably the uh season two first episode like season two episode one which is the one with the ted raimi segment but there's also a segment about a kid who really loves the classic universal and like monster movies and stuff and there's like creature from the black lagoon references dragon references frankenstein's monster stuff like that and it's really really excellent it's probably like one of my favorite episodes of tv i've seen in recent memory um in terms of actual extras so season one has audio commentaries on every single episode with the cast and crew so i uh, checked out the one with uh, david bruckner uh, on his episodes which was uh, really fascinating loved hearing david bruckner speak and everything uh, season two obviously you get the two uh, animated and the holiday special which is really cool as well as photo galleries, an exclusive never-before-seen behind-the-scenes featurettes, uh, like a series of them, uh, and as well as uh, behind-the-scenes raw footage, which is a couple of minutes long. Uh, and all of these releases have subtitles too, which is great. And then the final one has a Comic-Con at-home panel, with some more behind-the-scenes uh, footage and a photo gallery. So you're getting some really nifty, neat, like, extras included too. So it's not just like you're getting the episodes and that's it. Like, those commentaries are solid. And uh, yeah, yeah, some of the interviews are really insightful too. I think on uh, the season two one, there's actually a segment showcasing how they uh, transport a certain character in one episode into classic monster, uh, classic horror films like Horror Express. Um, really, really great stuff. Um, so yeah, overall, I'd highly, highly recommend all three of these releases. I think that they're an excellent kind of uh, like niche thing that it's not going to appeal to everybody. Some people might dismiss them as corny and a bit goofy, but that's what I love about them. Like, I think, um, what is it? The season three tagline has a, a thing at the front where it says, creep show is back to make you ooh with delight. And I mean, yes, that's the thing. It's like really, really goofy. And then at the back, it says creep show season three continues to provide the campy chills. And yeah, like, no, I agree. It's really campy. It's really silly. And if you're in the mindset of, oh yeah, I'm just going to kick back, watch some goofy little uh, short horror tales and everything, you're going to have a hell of a time. The Blu-rays look great. They're like packed with some really, really interesting bonus features. And I definitely, definitely cannot wait to uh, check out season four when uh, it gets a Blu-ray release. And uh, I'll probably check it out on Shudder as well. But I really, really, I want to complete this collection. I've got three of them there, and I, I need Creepshow 3, unfortunately, like the actual uh, film, but I mean, come on, I'm, I'm almost Creepshowed out, I just need two more things i need season four and i need creep show free <laughs> um but yeah no i'd absolutely recommend those and once again i want to uh, give a massive uh, thank you and shout out to uh, aim publicity for sending those over i really really appreciate it guys i um yeah no i had a really fun time checking those out and i'm glad that i could kind of talk to you guys about it too and yeah i hope that everybody watching did enjoy so yeah let me know how the audio is on this let me know how the video is would you prefer if i just went back to using my uh webcam or do you prefer this new approach uh, is the audio a bit hit or miss would you like me to do it just let me know in the comments because i'm really really excited about this uh i don't know improvement to the video quality it's been it, it's been a bit of a rough little bit of time in terms of like video quality and it's a bit a bit spotty on the channel so yeah let me know what you think anyway I hope you did enjoy. If you did, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Comment below and let me know what you thought of Creepshow 1, 2, and 3, if you've seen them. If you haven't, I'll leave links in the description to these. You can go buy them, uh, or again, they're on Shudder too, but I'd strongly recommend the uh, Blu-rays because they look great, and there's not as much compression, but there's no compression compared to the Shudder releases, which stream in 720p. These are full native 1080p. They look great. Anyway. Stay safe, have a fantastic day, and I will speak to you all later. Bye!